Today, we're looking for jumping spiders, and I guarantee you there are more species out there than you think. Jumping spiders are some of the most diverse arachnids on the planet. With over 6,000 species in the family Salticidae, there are more jumping spiders than any other individual group of spiders. These diurnal insect predators have their own claim to fame. Unlike cellar spiders, widow spiders, or pretty much any other group, the jumping spider is not something people are generally afraid of. With their huge, adorable eyes and intelligent, inquisitive nature, jumpers have broken into mainstream animation and are now among one of the most popular spider pets in the world. They're also incredibly fun to interact with. A lot of you have indicated in the comments below that you really like the jumping spiders. Today is a perfect day for hunting jumping spiders. It's sunny, it's cool, there's lots of insects out. One of the first mistakes a lot of people make is they'll come out at the exact wrong time or the wrong conditions. If it's too hot, if it's too cold, a lot of your target species are not gonna be out moving around. And unless you're really good at finding their hiding places during the day, it's gonna be really difficult to find anything worth noting if you're out in the wrong conditions. A little pro tip, if you're uncomfortable, they're uncomfortable. Try going out in the early morning, late evening, or on cool days for the best results searching for jumping spiders. Now, of course, we should start with the basics, right? The first place I always go and check for jumping spiders is the place where I see the most of them. Any of these bushes are fair game for several different species of jumping spiders. So my hope is that I'll be able to get one or two while I'm out here. The bushes of my front garden are perfect for hunting jumping spiders. Leaves and branches make thick cover for these cryptic ambush predators as they watch for prey. On the right day, jumping spiders will be out sitting on leaves where I can see them. Check this out here. It's a teeny, tiny jumping spider. Too small to get a proper segment with. Definitely a good sign that there are plenty more out here in my backyard. When searching for jumping spiders, you want to keep in mind that these creatures are small. In a given area, there can be many different microhabitats, each with their own unique spiders. If you want to collect a large number of spiders, taking a stick of some kind and whacking the bushes and branches onto a sheet can yield a ton of individuals, but I prefer to hunt with just my eyes. It minimizes the damage to the bushes, and it prevents accidentally killing spiders. It can be a bit more challenging, but the trick is to look carefully for habitats suitable for small insect predators, then watch for movement. Right here is a bronze jumping spider. These guys are common little bush dwellers, so I'm not shocked to find them hanging out in this little bush here. They can be really, really cantankerous and tough to catch. It's a good one for me to show you techniques that I use to catch jumping spiders to make sure that I can secure the catch without hurting the animal. Jumping spiders are small and fragile. They're also really fast. You kind of have to be precise with your movements, otherwise it's either going to escape or get killed in the process. What I generally do is I'll approach with a container, some kind of thing that I can clasp together over the jumping spider. You can catch them barehanded. Some species will be a bit more trusting and will walk directly on your hand from the leaf or, or stick they're sitting on. Bronze jumpers are usually one of the ones that are a little bit flightier, so I like to corner them onto a leaf or some kind of thin part of the plant they're resting on, and then I will clasp them in some kind of container. Look at that. Bronze jumping spider. Beautiful. Oh, we've got our first spider. It's a bronze jumping spider, a male. So I'd say we're off to a pretty good start here. And I wanna actually show you, with this first little guy, how I actually safely handle jumping spiders. So what I do is I'll start with them in the container, and I will Get them into one side of the container. So he's right now, he's on the lid. And let him kind of walk around. Sometimes they will walk directly onto your hand. Um, this guy does not seem to want to do that. So what I'll do is I'll kind of tap the container to coax him onto my hand to bang on him a little bit and he'll hop off. Give him a minute to settle down. With the males, especially male jumping spiders, they're a bit more nomadic, a bit more exploratory, and a bit more skittish. So sometimes it takes a little bit. Like right now he's jumping off and he's on a little escape line you can see. Sometimes it takes a couple tries to get them to settle down. Once they do, they will just chill out and explore your hand, and it is awesome. Most jumping spiders will relax pretty quickly once they're in your hand. As long as you let them roam around at their pace, they won't feel threatened. The males, which will usually have flashier colors and be smaller in size, tend to be a bit more keen to jump off and disappear, while the females, which are a bit stockier with muted colors, will settle in once they've realized you're not a threat. Different species will all behave differently though, and even within the same species, you'll find hyper and chill individuals. Now, one of my favorite things about looking for insects, spiders, any kinds of little creepy crawly invertebrates in my backyard is it's almost like hunting for little secrets in a video game. Video games give you clues that hidden items are nearby. If you interact with the environment in the right way as hinted by the clues, you can reveal all sorts of secrets. 
Hunting for insects and spiders is kind of like that. There are little clues in the environment that can give you hints that a certain spot might be favorable for something to live there. When I'm out searching for spiders, I'm examining the environment, looking for these clues. Now, just because those clues are there, doesn't mean you'll find your target, but it does mean that if you find enough places with those clues, you can increase your chances a ton. Out here a lot further from the house, the landscape gets a lot more untamed, which means there's a lot more species for us to find. This clearing here has a ton of vegetation, tons of plant diversity, which in turn brings a ton of insect diversity. Basically, what we're taking advantage of here is jumping spider behavior and habits. These guys are diurnal insect predators, and this is the perfect hunting ground for a diurnal insect predator. Tons of insects, tons of light. I would be honestly shocked if we didn't find a cool jumping spider in this habitat. The jumping spider is a visual ambush predator. They use their huge front eyes to scan for movement, watching for insects to land or crawl near them before they pounce. Across most species, even ground dwelling ones, this means the spiders need relatively open spots to use as vantage points to search for food. Here in this clearing, this means checking exposed leaves and examining the stalk-like plants carefully, watching for the patient jumping spiders waiting for their prey. Check this out. It's a green jumper. These are probably one of the strangest looking jumping spiders you can possibly find. It looks like she's climbing this dead fennel stalk, looking for different prey items, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab her and we'll take a look at this insane little spider. This is a green jumping spider. These guys are really great camouflaged ambush predators. That green coloration, it's no wonder she was out here in this field blending with all these plants. Perfect camouflage out here. But I always think they almost look like miniature lynx spiders with their longer legs, big old abdomens, and that bright green coloration. Now, just because they are different and weird looking doesn't mean they act any different than any other jumping spider. They're still inquisitive. They're still curious, generally pretty docile and interactive. Like she's walking all over and kind of just cocking her head, looking at me, trying to figure me out. But they are probably one of the creepier looking ones. This is not one that I would consider to be adorable like the Phytopus species. This one is definitely a strange looking animal. The green jumper may be a strange and exciting species to find, but it can be found in a wide variety of habitats. Sometimes you have a specific species in mind. This is where knowing the microhabitat preferences of your target species comes into play. A little bit of research beforehand can allow you to have specific targets while you're out in the field. Now we have some practice reading habitats. We're gonna actually target a specific species. One of my favorite types of jumping spiders to find out here is the tan jumping spider. They're super camouflaged, super cryptic, and because they're a bit more skittish than typical jumping spiders, they're a lot more fun for me to work with because it kind of challenges me a bit. Now, I actually happen to know that these jumping spiders lurk on rough barked trees. I occasionally see them up by the house, out by the coops, but I'm going to challenge myself to actually find one in habitat, not on a building, not on any kind of man-made structures. So I'm actually out here in my front yard, the different part of my front yard, where we have lots of tall pine trees. And this is the first place I'm gonna check because we do have a nice established population of tan jumpers here. Since this is prime habitat for a tan jumper, I'm gonna start inspecting all the little crevices, nooks and crannies on the bark and see if we can find one of our targets. You can barely see her. She blends in so well to the bark. She's right there. Touch her, she'll move. She's right above my finger. She looks so much like the bark. Have a look at this. Right, before she escapes, let's kind of get her into a container. Get a lid on her. Get it in a bit more of a controlled environment. Have a look at that. Tan jumping spider. What I absolutely love about these guys and why I actively target them is their camouflage is next to none. That mottled abdomen and that white, black, and gray pattern makes them blend in perfectly in the bark environments where they inhabit. Now these guys will also be found on your house and I actually have a couple that I'll see by my front door and they'll live inside little cracks and crevices in the wood along your house. See, knowing the habitats like this and knowing how to identify areas that meet habitat specifications can make hunting spiders, especially jumping spiders, really easy in your backyard. And jumping spiders, compared to all other arachnids, are probably the most interactive, fun little creatures 
and to actually get out and catch, even if you're afraid of spiders. And learning the habitats of some of your favorite species can make hunting them even easier and take a lot of stress and frustration out of your searches. The coolest thing is you can get really creative with these techniques, trying them in all kinds of different habitats to find all kinds of crazy new jumping spider species. If you wanna see a truly incredible species that I found recently while exploring, check out this velvet ant mimic jumping spider I found out in the woods. I hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.